Hi, and welcome to VFX Cheaters. My name's Josh, and in this tutorial, I'm just gonna go over the UVs on the sword that I've created. So, what you can see here, we've got the sword here, and it's all tidied up. And you can't see it now, but if I change my use default material, you can see that I've placed like a, a UV checker texture on it, and you can see that it's all nicely UV'd. And we can look around, and we can have a look at sort of things. And the main thing that you'll notice that the density of all the UVs are identical. So, and the reason for that is um, it makes it easier for the texture artists um, to sort of add global sort of um, textures to it so they can add a final dust pass or dirt pass over the whole thing. And they don't have to worry about it being um, stretched or different sizes on some parts. So we'll just go through, it's only a, this is only a quick overview of things that I've done. So, if I just select my chainsword, I'll just bring my UV editor over. Ooh. So you can see I've got my UV layout here and I've not got it all in one title like I did before. So I've organized all this into different tiles, also known as UDOMs. And this means that we can get maximum uh, resolution for our textures basically and the way I've done this I started off with picking my biggest sort of piece of that geometry which was the the bar so I kind of knew that this is the biggest part and that I'm probably going to see it the closest and it's probably where I'm going to want most of the detail so I kind of set the textile density to this and You'll notice I have chopped it in half, and you'll probably say, oh, you're going to get a seam down here. And that's fine. Um, you can either go through the roots of um, triplanar projections, um, which if I was going to do that, I'd have probably broken it up more so I can get some more resolution there. But I was kind of settled with the fact that one seam is fine for me to fix, but if there's like 10 seams which I had to fix, I'd, I'd just do triplanar. So I've just kind of done it to a maximum, maybe the chances of having one seam that I have to fix. And I've set the textile density to splitting this into two UDIMs, as you can see here. So if I just select my UV shells, I think that's on that side, and you can see that's those UDIMs. And then basically I've just set everything to that textile density, which you can sort of see in your tool set. And from this I got 14.3. Then I just use this on all the other ones and set my textile density to that. So that was pretty much it for setting the, the density for all the same size. And you see it's all kind of laid out nicely. It could be better. Um, probably could be a bit more optimized for uh, UV space. But for this, I'm, I'm not. it's not that many UDIMs. Um, sometimes you can have UDIMs that take up all of the block and further up. And that's where you kind of have to be quite a bit more optimal with your placement. But you notice that I've used two sort of um, two uh, rows here. And like I said, with everything else, when, if you're texturing this yourself, you're probably gonna just do it how you would want to do it. If you're doing it for a texture artist, it's always good to sort of get in contact with them see how they want it text um uv'd because they might have specific ways that they want their uvs done um usually the, the most common way is, is uh, having udims in specific types of material which i've kind of done here and they may specify whether if they want different types of material above or on the right so for this case i've because in reality i haven't got that m many different material types i've got metal plastic um, and fabric and some wood in here so most of them is all under the metal category so what I've tried to do is keep all the metal things that I know that's going to be metal into their own sort of respective UDIMs which I've done here so you can sort of make out the parts that I've made so we've got the bar here and all the bits that go on the edge and I've kept all the metal parts together and you'll also notice there's things that look pretty similar. 
because we had the duplicates, I would always, I wouldn't UV them separate. I would UV one set of duplicates, then I'll copy that, then move the UDEM. But I'll also make sure I move it as a group. So if I do just want to reuse that texture, I can just shift it up in the UDEM space without having to texture it. And it's it's, it's a workflow that's easy for everyone else. Um, you don't have to copy UVs, you might want to texture this all separately and do different textures on each one, but it gives you the option to say, if you've textured this and you don't want to text the other one, you can just shift all your textures up to here. And I've kept all the metal parts in as, as much together, and you can see everything sort of straightened out as best as possible, and all my directional stuff is going from left to right. So all my grain, say like, like um, the grain in the metal would be going left to right. And it's the same with everything else. So the sort of stainless steel look would go through that way. And I've, I've not done it so much with these because these are going to be sort of more... The rounder things I can sort of cheat and paint a bit easier. But they're going to be quite worn, so we might not see as much. So I'm just going to go through. And you can sort of see now we've gone to a different material here. And I think this is mostly plastic in here. So we've got the, the electronics case... All of the cabling, you can see the, the, the wires, oh no, these are, yeah, these are the cables and the zip ties. So we've got all the plastic here. We have actually got the, the wooden handle up here, because it's the only wood object in it. So I've just stuck it in there. And at the end, we've got all the fabric and all the sort of the hand-woven parts. It's not the best sort of UVing, but I've made sure that these are straight. So when I do make my tileable texture, it's going to sort of go across them all nicely. I mentioned before about uh, duplicates, because I've basically modelled the bar and duplicated it, there's no point re-UVing it, so these are the complete duplicates of UV'd one, duplicated it, then I've actually, you notice they're not exactly the same, it's because you have to flip them, otherwise um, they'll be upside down in the UV editor. So this is why it's useful to have something like this on your texture. So you can see if things are upside down or not. And it's just much easier to identify places that are wrong. Because you don't have to have this one. You just have anything that you can easily spot. Something that's upside down or backwards. So I've tried to keep everything pretty sort of close together. And I probably even though... I've set it up so I can just texture one and then just flip the UVs and use the same texture. I actually don't really want to do that. I'll probably still texture it separately because I want them to be different. But I might use this one as a base layer for that one. So it gives me more options instead of having to start fresh with this one. I maybe can just use the textures from here and use it on the other one and then edit that one. And it's pretty much the same with all of this. And it's all sort of duplicates and sort of laid out. You could probably do the same with the nuts and bolts. You could have probably... With something like this, you can stack UVs, um, but it, if you don't like where it is, you, you really don't have much of a choice but to then un move the UVs around. So I know these are all going to be a fairly similar generic metal, so it wasn't really too much of a problem. So I'm not too bothered that there's just loads of that. But like I said, getting contact with your texture artist or it's up to you how you want to do it and the last sort of space is very similar to the duplicates but the only difference in this one is that there are some things that I might take into ZBrush and sculpt because I want more detail and this is the let's go to object mode so that's this part so if I just zoom in on that, that's the sort of the, the handle guard. So I might take that into ZBrush and sculpt it. And you'll notice that it's um, subdivided in a way that works a little bit better for ZBrush. And the same for this bit. The subdivisions are as close to square as possible. Whereas some things like uh, if I really wanted to take the bar into ZBrush and sculpt some of that, I'd have to probably take another look at uh, the topology on this. Because if I subdivide this now for sculpting, 
it's not going to subdivide very equally and it's going to be very biased to the edges and you'll have very strange sort of rectangular subdivisions here. So if you're definitely taking it into ZBrush, you want to make sure that your geometry is as square as possible. So you want it more, instead of being uh, saving poly count on here, on the one that I knew that I was going to sculpt, I made sure that my geometry uh, is as like sort of uniform as possible. So when it does subdivide, so if I just go mesh and smooth, it does it equally throughout. So when I put loads of subdivisions, it's going to continue doing that. I'm not going to do that now, but... So that's one of the other reasons. Because... I don't want to really take this whole thing into ZBrush. Um, because when I subdivide it, it's going to subdivide everything. And I don't really need to subdivide this to sculpt it. So I've made sure I've put all my things that I know that I'm going to sculpt into one UDIM. So then I can just bring these separate pieces and just sculpt them separately, not having to worry about all the other bits. And you can do the same. If you want to take the whole thing to ZBrush, you can. You would have to sort of address these sort of uh, polygons though, especially around here on the motor. You've got a very long rectangle, so you'd have to sort of break this down. But I'm not going to take that into ZBrush because we can do that in bumper normals quite easily. It's just for uh, these parts, I'd just like to add a little bit more detail, I think. But yeah, that's pretty pretty much it. Um, it's all UV'd. Oh yeah, and the the mash objects. So I haven't got, I haven't UV'd all of these. So this is a different sort of workflow that you can use. So I have got all the mash objects for the the, the chain blade, and you can see I've UV'd all of them. And if I duplicated all those and spread them out, that's going to take up, look at, that takes up so much UDIM space there. We're going to be using like 20, 30, maybe even more 40 UDIMs just for the chainsaw blade. It's going to be super heavy. So when I do this, I'm only going to give them one uh, UV section. Then when this is rigged, this is going to be instanced around and not duplicated. So it will share the same uh, texture values but in what we'll do in the shader we'll stick a jitter node on so we can break it up without actually having to model or texture and other things so we can do stuff in the shader to break that up because that will look it will just look like duplicates but there are ways we can get around that so I've only done that UV'd once and that will just be duplicates in a, well, that will be instances and it will work faster as well for the rig Cool, so yeah, we're pretty much done with this. Um, we're pretty much ready to take this to a texturing stage now. Um, I'll probably go through and do some more prep of this because I want to make a high... Because I'm going to do this in substance. And when you take stuff into substance and you bake your texture maps, you want to bake... Because obviously, if we brought this in now, it's going to be unsmoothed. And you want to make sure that you're going to bake your texture maps at the level it's going to be smoothed. But obviously if you press 3 here, it's not going to do it. So we actually need to subdivide this. So if we smooth that, we'd have to bake that on and send that into... And even so, that's still a bit faceted. So I'd probably... I'm going to go through and make a high high res version of this. So um, we can import that also into Substance. Um, but yeah, all I'll be doing is just probably going through, because I don't need to do it on everything. Like, some of these things don't need that many subdivisions, because they're quite round. It's probably going to be mostly this, to be honest. So, I'll go through and I'll uh, make a high-res model of that as well. But yeah, we're pretty much done. It's a pretty quick sort of UDIM overview of what I've done, and hopefully we should be getting into the texturing side of it soon. Um, I'll probably texture it first and show you the results, then uh, do it like I did before because it just works out better for you to see the end point, um, whereas with the modelling you kind of just saw it come grow as it um, was built. So this time I'm going to texture it, it will show you the end result first, then sort of um, 
go through the tutorial of what I did. But whilst I'm doing that, I'll probably do other little things as well because that might take a little time. But um, yeah, if you've enjoyed this tutorial, hit that like button and subscribe for more like this.